Uh, hey guys, good evening. I hope I'm pretty much audible as well as visible. So I welcome you all in today's discussion. Uh, today is going to be the first lesson of the playlist which we have prepared. That is through uh, uh, the, the data analysis in three weeks. So we'll be talking about a few of the interesting topics over three weeks of time. And we'll be covering Python, basics of Python, few exercises there. And then we'll be covering pandas, numpy, and then we'll also be covering a few of the plotting techniques over uh, uh, Python. Right, so that's going to be the agenda for overall uh, uh, three weeks, and that's going to be that's what we're going to be covering over the three weeks of time. So do st uh, stay tuned with us, guys, over three weeks, and we'll be covering a few interesting topics rigorously. Right. So, but before that, uh, today's agenda is uh, introduction to Python data type. So we started this yesterday, but unfortunately, due to some technical issues, we couldn't continue. So we're gonna be uh, taking forward with that. So uh, we're gonna we have made the uh, video private for that. So, but again, for today, we're gonna be discussing about the data types in Python, right? So that's, that's gonna be our agenda and uh, we'll be covering that. But again, uh, before starting, let's have a quick round of introduction. So, you know, my name is Arpit Jain and I'm a lead data scientist myself. I've been into industry for almost nine years and uh, I have been working in multiple domains. Uh, so I was with bank earlier, then I was in a cloud domain. I was in a manufacturing sector, automobile one, then right now I'm in telecommunication. So I've seen industry, I've been into part, I've been part of uh, uh, multiple domains, multiple sectors in data science. And that has been something which is my forte. And I've been to analytics, right? So, and along with that, I'm also a motivational speaker. So I talk to students, I, I take career mentorships. I talk to students regarding their job, career and all that. So any questions do guys put up in the chat. So this is a pretty much a live session, right? Hey, Yog, thank you for joining in. So this is a live session, a session guys. So uh, do utilize the time and then uh, uh, post up your questions if you have anything, right? So we're going to try to take up the questions as well. Uh, but again, sticking to the topic, so today's uh, agenda is towards uh, uh, my introduction of data types in Python. So let's let's quickly start with that. And meanwhile, guys, if you have any questions in anything, so do try to put up a question in the chat. Uh, I'll try to take that to the best of my knowledge. Right. So jumping to our content. So I hope my screen is pretty much visible. So as I said, so we'll be talking about uh, Python data types. That's going to be our agenda for uh, today's class, right? So, uh, so first of all, let's try to understand what is Python, right? So what is Python? So why, why we are talking about Python here? So Python is definitely uh, one of the odd languages, which is generally being more profoundly being used in the data science field these days. Okay. So now what does it mean? So here in data science, it's not only about Python. So we have multiple languages, to be honest. You might have heard of R. You might have heard of other languages such as SPSS, SAS. So multiple, multiple platforms on which you can perform your data analysis stuff, right? So Python, why Python? Python is more profoundly used in industries because I would say Python provides a lot of flexibility in terms of how you can integrate it. So ultimately, whatever you are building up, whatever problem you will be solving, right, in terms of data science, uh, that's going to be solved in some other other platform that's going to be in your own system or maybe in some server. And ultimately, you need to get it deployed in some other environment for the business to get benefited with, right? So that is where Python is very flexible. It, it does provide a lot of integration support in multiple architectural blocks. And along with that, Python also has enormous uh, uh, library support. It's an open source anyway, right? So every now and then very good APIs, high level APIs uh, being coming up and uh, that's gonna, that's actually helping us to get the job done in more and more and easier way, right? So Python has a lot of benefits and it's a very plain, simple language, very, very easy to uh, cope up with. So it's an object oriented programming and where um, it's more of an English language kind of coding, right? So it's pretty syntax, syntax is a very simple compared to other languages. So it provides a lot of benefits over other languages. That is the reason why we'll be covering Python. And Python, so in Python again, as uh, compared to other languages as well, so we have certain data types. So inbuilt data types available uh, in our uh, specific uh, Python language. So there are certain data types. So what is data type, for example, what like for say, right? So data types are nothing but the ways in which the data can be categorized. And we have we have multiple ways in which they can be categorized. So here in Python, so we have certain specific data types, right? So 
it basically is giving us an information into what kind of data we'll be dealing with, right? And in Python, since every everything is an object, it's an object of a class. So here, uh, uh, like, you know, variables are the instances of these classes, right? So there's going to be one thing which you have to take care of because it's more of an object-oriented programming in Python, right? And certain standard data types in Python are numeric, sequential, Boolean, set, and dictionary. So these are very standard Python data types. So numeric, uh, anything which is number, right? So that's going to be your numeric part. Sequential is anything which is a sequence of uh, uh, something. So in sequence here, it could be characters. Uh, I mean, sequence of characters, that's going to be strings. So that's again a sequential data type. And again, we can have sequence of uh, uh, more, more similar data types or dissimilar data types, which can be mutable or which cannot be mutable. Uh, so, uh, so we have something called as lists, we have tuples. So those are again, combination or sequences of things which is available uh, more profoundly. So we have sequential data types there. Along with that, we have Boolean. So Boolean is more of true false, like yes or no kind of a thing. So that is again there with Python. Set, again, a very interesting one. So we have um, the collection of objects, which is coming under set. We were talking about that as well. And the last we have profoundly available here, dictionary. So dictionary is more of a mapper, which is available in Python. Uh, so it's more of a key and the value pair. So for every key, we have certain values available. And again, uh, being defined in terms of colons and commas. So we'll be talking about that as well, right? So again, so here in this session, we'll be uh, talking about the basics of these data types, right? So we'll be covering the basis of all of these. And in fact, our objective is to go deep in each of these data types. So when I talked about list tuples, very, very, very important data types, and then we have strings, we have dictionaries. So we have another sessions planned where we will be going deep in each of these and also trying to solve uh, as many questions as possible. So because what I generally feel is like even just reading the concepts is not really appropriate. It's not really up to the mark so, so that you can understand everything, right? So eventually, it's, it's Python is all about practice. So more you practice, more question you solve, more comfortable you will be. So we'll try to keep our objective also uh, to solve as many questions as possible. So we'll be doing that as well. So to start with, let's start with the basic ones. So let's try to cover the, the topics here in this session. So numeric, so numeric, uh, as I was talking about, so anything, any data uh, representing in terms of numbers, so that's either be an integer, whole number, or we have a floating number, which is nothing but uh, a decimal values kind of a thing, and even a complex, right, so complex number. So all of these three are part of my numeric data type, right? So now how it is being defined. So integers are defined as my int. Uh, the floating values are defined as my float and complex numbers are defined as complex classes in Python, right? So now what are these individual? Let's quickly take up that. Integers, so nothing but represented by int class, int class, right? So here it can, it can contain both the positive as well as the negative whole numbers without the fractions, right? So integers, you know, it's without the fraction, without the decimal. So we are talking about the positive and the negative whole numbers. Right. And in Python, we generally don't have any limit in how long these integers can be. Right. So there is no particular limit in terms of what will be the range of my positive and the negative values here. Right. So we can go in any direction in any um, exponential form. Right. Likewise, in float. So float is generally represented by the float class. Right. And in the float class, uh, we have the real numbers. So basically representation in terms of decimals as well. So we have the decimal values representation here. So here, optionally, we also have an option to have the E notifications. You might have heard of the scientific notification, right? So we can also use uh, capital E or small e followed by the positive or the negative integer, maybe appended to specify the, spare, the scientific notation, also a part of my floating class, okay? The last one is the complex numbers. So complex number where it is represented by the complex class. So we have the real part and the imaginary part here. For example, two plus three J. So represented by J. So J is my imaginary part here. So that's gonna be mentioned as two plus three J, for example, that's gonna be my complex numbers. Cool. So in numeric, we have three broad classes, integers, float, float, and the complex numbers. Now let's quickly jump to how we can create and how we can write these things. Very simple guys. So, so what I've done is I have defined A as my 100. So 100 is my whole number here, right? So there's no decimals and all that. So now what I've done is I've just trying to print the value of A here. So type of A and then type. So you can use type to identify what is the class, type class of my individual uh, uh, variables here. So let's try to see this. So for example, you can see, so here, 
type of A is basically class int. Can you see this? So for uh, for A, we call it it's an int class because the reason to that is it's a whole number, right? So that's where we have uh, uh, it's a, it's a it's a class of int. So we have a question here from Jayant and it says examples for floats tells about briefly. Okay, floats. Float, I'll tell you. So I'll just take an example here. So for example, look at this. So now another one, right? So now here, the, for the first one, A, I'm trying to write the value as 100, which is a whole number, right? So now on the second example, B, 99.99, which is nothing but a decimal value, a floating integer, it's not a whole number, right? So we have a decimal point mentioned there, right? So now look at this. So we have type of B. So here, if you're going to run this, what will I go, what I'll get? So here type of B is nothing but my float class. So the, the function is type, simple type. Okay. So I can just call it on top of this also. Like for example, type of B, if I do it like this, I'll get float. Okay. So simple as that. So if I print this, so I'll be getting the class of this. So if I just add print on top of this, I'll get class float. Okay, nothing, nothing, nothing difference in this. So I'm trying to understand. So this is giving us what is the uh, class of my uh, uh, individual uh, numeric type here. So it's float. Okay. Again, interesting example here is this. So now I have something called as b is equal to 100 dot. Okay. So now Jen, the question to you, do you think that this is a floated type? So I have b is equal to 100 dot zero. So basically in science, in maths, so dot zero is nothing, right? So it's basically, uh, there's no, there's no value addition to the number, right? But still what I've done is so instead of writing 100, I've just written 100 dot or 100 dot zero or zero, 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 whatever, right? So, so what do you think? This is still a float number. So the answer to that is yes, right? So here again, so even if there is no value on top of this. There's no value addition after giving the decimal value. Still, this is given as my float value because I have identified, I've given this decimal. This is an optional decimal available. So even if for, for so I've stored this as a float value, going forward ahead, if there is any addition or multiplication or any, any value addition to this particular number, right? So th this will have the capability to have the floating numbers within it. Okay, so we can definitely use this as a float. So if I if I do a print, so here this is if I just do the same thing here, if I do a print the class of this type, I'll still get the floating number. Okay, because even though there's no value addition to this, still it's gonna be my float type. Okay. Right. Great, Jan. Thank you. So uh, now for the third type where I have the where the complex number, right? So I have one plus two J, you can see this, I've written another number C, one plus two J. So I have one being the real part here and two J being the imaginary part here, right? So that's gonna be my complex number. So complex number is nothing but the combination of my real and the imaginary part, right? So that's plain simple as that. So if, if I'm gonna use that, that's where it's gonna be my complex number. So one plus two J, Right, so type of C here is nothing but complex. If I see this, so I'll be getting type of C as complex. Cool. Plain simple as that. So that is where I'll be defining my data types, right? So here I'm just creating, I'm just initializing my data types. I'm not doing anything here. I'm just, I've just created a variable. I'm trying to call the data type out of it, right? So plain simple as that. So again, now once we have defined these, we can obviously use these variables to any of my purpose. So I can do A plus B, C plus D, D by D by B, whatever manipulation I have to do, right? I can do, do just on top of it. Cool. Great. So that's that's a quick start to my numeric data type. Again, uh, we'll be going deep in, uh, in our exercises, so don't worry about that. Uh, but again, for now, let's proceed to our next data type, which is sequence, right? So as I was talking about more, little, little, little complex data type, so compared to my numeric, so we have sequences here. So sequence is nothing but the ordered collection of similar or different data types. Important thing here to note, guys. So it could be an ordered collection of similar or different data types. So it's not mandatory to have the similar data type in the sequences, right? So again, in the, in the same sequence, there could be different data types available, right? I'll show it to you in the example as well, but always remember this. In a sequence, we still can have different data types available. Okay, so sequence allows to store multiple values in an organized and an efficient fashion, right? So it is 
it's actually helping you to store multiple values. So we have multiple values. So that is where we, we, we are calling about the collection, right? So if, the, if there is a collection, like it definitely means that we have multiple values which is being organized together. So that is where sequences comes into picture. And we have sequence where I'll be storing multiple values in an organized and efficient manner. And major sequence types in Python are strings, list, and tuples, right? So as I was talking about, so string is going to be my sequence of characters. List gonna be my sequence of multiple data types. So we'll be talking about that likewise in tuples. So list, list and tuples also have their respective differences, which I'll be taking in detail again. Uh, but again, they are part of my uh, sequential data types. Okay, cool. So let's try to take uh, 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 each of them one by one. We'll see. So what is, what is a string, right? So string is a collection of one or more characters put in quotes, right? So string is nothing but one uh, is a collection of one more characters put in quotes. So characters kya hai? Characters are nothing but my, uh, my, my, my letters basically. So A, B, C, D and all that. So that's going to be my characters or even in that say the numbers one, two, three, four. So anything, any character going to be any, which is going to be putting in quotes. So that's going to be my string. So for example, number one. So if I just write one, that's going to be my whole number. That's going to be my integer class, right? But what if, if I just write one wrapped in quotes, so quote one, so wrapped in quotes that the, the uh, when I say wrapped in quotes, what I mean is this. So when I write this, so what I say print, if I do type of one, that's going to be my class of int, right? And the same thing, if I just write this wrapped under quote, so now I'm wrapping this one under quote. If I see this, this becomes a class of string. This is not number anymore, right? So this is where it means, this is where the difference is. So if any character is wrapped under quotes, that's going to be the class of string. So plain simple as that. So it is a plain intuition, right? So whenever you want to convert a, any uh, a data type into string, you're going to wrap, uh, uh, you're going to wrap the entire uh, whatever content you have under the quotes. So that is one way, not the ideal way, but one way to convert into strings. You can see that, right? So it's plain simple. So I've just converted the number which was this into character uh, into string just by adding the quotes uh, start and the end, right? So uh, we have a question here. What is the main use of double quotations in Python program? I'll I'll, I'll talk about that, Jan. So I have actually covered. So we have actually it's not only it's not only double quotes. So we have three different types of quotes. So we have single quote, double quotes, and we have triple quotes also available in strings. I have covered the examples. So let me let me show you that. Okay. So uh, in Python, there is no character data type. A character is a string of length, length one. So there is no specific character as a data type. So when I was talking about one or more characters put in quotes, right? So as, as I said, so this character can be my alphabets, can be my numbers, can even be my uh, special characters. Anything is fine. So anything, anything which is going to be uh, uh, like, which is of length one, that's going to be my character, right? So this character is not a specific data type here. Okay, so always, always remember that. So now here, anything which is wrapped under my quotes gonna be represented by str class or my string class, right? So that's gonna be the part of my string. Now, now just look at this. How are we gonna write the? Uh, how are we gonna initiate the the the, the strings? So Jayan, to answer your question, so I'll be covering uh, those examples on single quotes, double quotes, triple quotes. I'll show it to you when and how to use that. Okay. So to start with, let's let's see on the single quotes. I think Jayant also put a very, very good point here, right? So we also need to understand. So there are there are multiple ways. So quotes, quotes, kya hai? Quotes. So there are different types of quotes available. So for example, I have letter one, right? So if I do just one, they will be printing one. So if I just wrap it around a single quote like this, that's going to be my string. So that's going to be my string. And now if I do it like double quotes and instead of single quote, I can also use double quotes. That's still going to be giving me the string. Okay. And I, I can also use triple quotes on top of this. That's still going to be my string. Okay. So single quote, double quote, triple quotes, all are equally valid. Okay. So they all are giving me, a, so if I just do, uh, uh, for example, type of this, that's going to be my string. Okay. 
So even if I, that's going to be from one type, as I was talking about earlier also. So we have two more types. So we can do it with the single quote as well. That's still a string. And also if I do it on double quotes, that's still a string for me. Can you see this? All of these are my strings. So I can either write my characters wrapped in a single quote, double quote or triple quote. I'll tell you, I'll show it to you when to use what, okay? It's not, so again, uh, if you uh, if you are able to write in any of these fashion, anything is good. So ultimately your data is being converted into string data type, okay? So that's not an issue if you use single or double or triple. But again, there is a, there is certain edge conditions. I'll show you that when to use what, okay? So first, now here my string says, hello world, okay? So my, it's like, I'm just trying to write like, like this, okay? So hello, hello, Hello world. Okay. So this is going to be my string. So if I print it like this, it's going to give me an error because it's not a valid syntax, right? It's, 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 there's nothing a keyword like this, but if I have to print it as a string, as a sentence, then I have to wrap this entire thing under a quote. So like this. So like, for example, right now we're doing it with a single quote, right? So if I do it like this, now it is able to print hello world, right? So it's the same thing. So I have, this is going to be my string, hello world, wrapped it in under the single quote. And if I print string, it's going to happily print me the hello world string, right? There's no problem in that. Now, what will happen if I do the same thing under double quotes? It'll still print me the same thing. Okay. So there's no problem in that, but let me show you where the difference comes. Okay. So now look at this example here. Okay. So now example says, hello, I am an engineer, right? And did you notice I have a, a single uh, a quote here between I am. So there's, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a way we write the English sentence, right? So we have I apostrophe M and engineer. So, but here, this is again a single quote, right? Now for this sentence where I have a single quote already being used as part of my sentence. So as part of my, one of the characters in the sentence. So this is the place where you are not supposed to use single quote as my outer wrapper. Okay. If we use single quote, right? For example, let me show it to you what will happen here. Look at this. So if I use a single quote here, right? So now this thing will become your one string, right? Can you see this? This only this part has been changed from black to red. So this has been identified as your one single string. And if you add another here, that is where it is still expect the closure to this. So now this is another string coming up. So it will expect you to add this one, another string to close. So now, so there are two strings by this. This is my first string and this single dot is my second string here in by this it means. Okay. So that is where it is a problem. So now when we have a single quote already available within the part of my sentence, right? So that is where I cannot use single quote because it will give me an error, right? So now in this case, I'm going to use the double quotes here. So now because anyway, single quote, double quote, triple quote, even in that fashion, I'm going to give me the same output, which is a string class, right? So if I use this, now it will happily print me, hello, I'm an engineer. And now here, this single quote is also identifies, uh, identified as a character, not a string wrapper here. It is being identified as a character, right? So that is where you have to be, be a bit more cautious when to use single or when to use double quotes. Make sense, Jayant? Clear? Cool. Similarly, we have something called as triple quotes as well, right? So as, as I was talking about, we can also have triple quotes mentioned uh, for writing our string sentences, right? So now look at this sentence. So I have, hello, I am an engineer and I like machines. Okay. So now machines is something which is wrapped under a double quote, more, more towards like some, some special character, some special word in my sentence, right? I can have wrapped it, uh, wrapped it under double quotes. I can, I can have it, right? There's no problem in having that, right? So now this string says, hello, I'm an engineer and I like machines. So in I am, we have a single quote, which, which we have seen already in the previous example. And now it also has double quotes as part of my characters, right? So this is one of the character available here. So this is something which we have to be very cautious about. So now in this case, we can't use single quote and also at the same time, we cannot use a double quotes because they both are part of my character strings, right? So this part of my characters 
for the entire string. So in this case, I'm going to be using the triple quotes to start and the end. So in here, in this case, it'll be again happily printing the same thing. Hello, I'm an engineer and I like machines. So here, single quote as well as double quotes are being identified as my characters of my sentences. Okay, that's the difference. Cool. Great, Jan. Thank you. So that's that's gonna be my basic difference of uh, when to write what single quotes, double quotes, and triple quotes. So you have an option to choose from. Okay. So now uh, again, very very interesting topic. So now you have strings defined, right? So you have strings with you. So now now what to do with that? So we have the strings with us. Now the objective is how to access uh, these elements of strings, right? So individual characters of string can be accessed by indexes. So there is a very very uh, 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 great Jen, thank you so much. So it's totally my pleasure. So any questions guys, as always, please try to put up in the chat and we'll try to take it to the best of my knowledge. And again, uh, and, and the end objective of this session is to have as much of interaction as possible and try to, uh, let's try to answer as many questions as we can, right? So let's not make it a monotonous class. Okay. Cool guys. Great. Uh, okay. And I'm monitoring my chat guys. So please uh, always put up your chat in the live live chat. So I'm monitoring my chat. So I'll try to answer your questions. Okay. Again, something interesting coming up guys. So now indexes. So we in Python, we have a very, very good uh, concept of indexes, right? So that is where Python has an advantage. So Python has uh, Python generally gives indexes to each of my individual elements for my ordered sequences, right? So it's indexes. So this indexes can actually be referred back to access the elements of my strings for any of my sequential data type in for that sense, right? So now what is an index? So each of my characters, each of my individual characters or each of my individual elements of my sequence for that sense, right? Is given a, a unique identification number, a more of a index to that based on the, it's like a positional index, right? So uh, based on the position, it, it's been given the uh, the unique identification number and to access that element back to use it for the for your manipulation or the for any of your purpose in future, right? So for, for your for the for the piece of your code, uh, we're going to be using those indexes. So how are these indexes defined? Very important point, guys. Let's see. Let, we'll be looking towards that. So uh, uh, to access elements, we have forward as well as backward indexing possible. So forward indexing means, so if I have anything from the beginning, so that's going to be starting from uh, the, so for example, suppose what I mean by this is, so I have suppose say uh, hello, like this, and I have something like given as a, so I have defined this hello as my character here. So what will happen now if I want to access H out of it, right? So if I want to access H out of it, so this is going to be my first index. So in Python, always remember guys, indexes started from zero. Okay. So indexing start always starts from zero. So here, uh, what you can understand is H is given the index value zero. Likewise, E is given an index value one. Likewise, all of this one, two, three, four. And the last, uh, your character O is given the index value. So zero, one, two, three, four. So this will be given four, right? So if I do a of a of zero, so how do I call an index by using the square brackets guys? Okay. So by using the square brackets, we'll be giving the, uh, my indexes there. So if I use a of zero, I'm going to be indexing the character first. The first character is going to be my H, right? And likewise, if I want to have O printed, I can do what a of four here. So I can get O here. I'll get O. So that's that's called as that's called as forward forward indexing. Okay, are nothing but my positive numbers. All indexes are my positive numbers. Okay. Now we again have another interesting concept which is called as. Now we'll be doing as in backward indexing. A backward indexing kya hota hai? Okay, so we have in this we'll be having we'll be having the negative numbers actually. So now what happens is, so now we won't start from the first index. Okay, rather we start from the last index in this case. So backward means last same indexing start karenge, right? So backward indexing here for O will be mentioned as minus one. Okay, so here minus one means your last index. Okay, likewise 
for uh, now I'll be printing all of them so uh, I have H E L here so that's gonna be L again it's gonna be my L so there, there are two L's right so that's gonna be my for all of them so I'll be writing it for all of them cool so for O it's gonna be minus one and then for this L will be minus two it'll be minus three and then this will be minus four and this will be minus five okay so that's going to be my indexes backward indexes for my uh, uh, elements here so now if i have to access uh, say same thing uh, uh, like suppose if i have to access o of hello what i have to what i have to give i can give minus 1 that's going to be giving me o based on the backward indexing i can still access o using the uh, the forward indexing as well so i can still give 4 that's going to give me o right so I can access the elements in either ways, forward indexing or backward indexing. Likewise, if I give say, for example, minus five, I can get H. Uh, also, I can get H by giving zero. I can have this, right? So both the ways are possible. So backward indexing and for forward indexing is quite straight for straightforward. The only thing is it always starts from zero, not from one. Remember that, okay? So indexing in Python, forward indexing always starts from zero. Likewise, in backward indexing, it always starts from minus one. Okay, and then it's there is like more of uh, uh, like skip of one for every unit one. So that's going to be my skip. Okay, so that's how the forward and the backward indexing works. Okay, so that's that's what it is being talking about here. So we have the forward and indexing uh, possible. So uh, the backwards are defined by minus one. And the forwards are simply my positive numbers with a skip of one. Okay, now how to access this? Now look at this guy. So now for example, suppose uh, uh, let's let's make this back. So uh, yeah, so again, okay, there's a good question. Zero is not taking a negative sign. So I mean, that's that's how it is being defined. There's nothing called as minus of zero actually, right? So zero is zero. So there's no minus of zero actually. So that's that's how well, you can always remember that. But again, just to give you that, that's like a more of a fact in Python. So forward indexing starts from zero and then uh, backward indexing starts from minus one. Okay, that's, that's something which is like kind of a rule. Okay, so, and there is no rule ka definition. It's like a rule. So remember that this is the only rule in indexing. Okay. But that's a good question, Jan. Thank you for asking that. So now uh, just to give an example. So we have this string given. So uh, geeks for geeks, that's going to be my string. So uh, we, are, we are just printing my string as initial string. So we have geeks for geeks. Okay. Now what I'm doing is now I want to print the first character of my string. So first character kya hai? I want to access g right so if i want if i were to access g how can i do that i can simply write zero i can do that right so i can write zero and if i do it the first character of string that's going to be printed as g because that is where my first character is quickly guys how can i also print uh, the first character from the uh, from the backward uh, indexing uh, way right so i can just simply keep on counting the numbers but again that is not advisable because I can simply print the for, uh, the first character by using the forward indexing, right? But again, just to give you here, what will be the index? Minus one will be S, then minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six, minus seven, minus eight, minus nine, minus 10, minus 11, minus 12, minus 13. So this is coming as minus 13, right? I can also give minus 13 here. It will still give me G, still okay, okay? But it's always advisable to use zero because that's more more friendly, right? So that's more uh, easy. I mean, that's more relatable. So we're going to use zero here. So that we will be getting the first character of string as zero, right? Likewise, we can also print the last character. What is my last character? I can always access the last character using minus one. You know that, right? So we're going to have the minus one here. So that's going to be my last character as S. So we have the last character as S. Quickly, guys, quickly, Jayant, the question to you now. Uh, an extension to this, how can you print the uh, uh, second last character? So in the in this part, what should be given here? So question to you is quickly, quickly, Jan, uh, tell me the answer here. So if I have to print the second last character, what should be given here? What can I give? I can use minus two, can't I? I can use minus two, right? I can do that. So if I use minus two, I'll be getting the second last character, which is K, 
right? I can do that. So that is where indexing becomes very important, guys. And indexing, how are we doing indexing here? We are doing indexing using the square brackets. It's using the square brackets, okay? So do not forget that. So uh, this, is, this is a very simple concept, but again, very important to, to give up your base on Python, okay? So this, this is something which is very important. And generally, uh, people tend to skip this, but again, uh, if you understand this, there won't be any issue uh, going forward with the basic data types, okay? <sighs> cool, so that's gonna be... Uh, uh, minus two is fine. Uh, minus seven, I didn't get your point. So minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six, minus seven. So minus seven karoge to o print ho jayega aapka. Hana? So the, it should not be minus seven, Jen. We are doing the second last character, so minus two is fine. Okay. Cool. So uh, again, a very, very basic, very basic intro to your, uh, 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 I would say strings, okay. We'll go deep here, guys, so don't worry. So here I'm just trying to give you an intro to the data types here, right? So uh, it, it's, a, it's a very brief intro. It will go deep in, in, in each of these topics, so don't worry about that. So uh, let's proceed, let's talk about, let, let's try to see how lists work, right? So what are lists? So lists is nothing but it's an ordered collection of my data stored under square brackets, right? So what are, what are lists basically? It's an ordered collection of my data. Okay, so here we are talking about list being where we have the data being uh, 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 collected over the ordered sequences, right? So we will see that how lists also work. This is a very, very flexible data type, guys. So here items are not necessary be of the same data type, okay? So for example, I can have a list where uh, there could be multiple elements and in this element, one could be a number, one could be a string, one could be a list itself maybe. So what I mean by that is, so for example here, so I'm going to be giving my list one. So list one, again, as I said, it will define using the square brackets. So under square brackets, I have multiple objects. So one, two, three, four, five, something like that, okay? And it's not necessary that it's, it has to be like this. I can have, I can have something like this. So I can have the random numbers also. So three, five, one, minus 20. And then I have two plus I, J, then I have uh, 2 plus 1j, then I have uh, 99. So this is also a list for me. Okay, so if I just do list 1, I'll be getting the list. So here I have, uh, I mean, I can have uh, say 1.22 also. So this is again going to be my list. So I can have multiple data types. So this is my integers, this is my flow, this is my complex number. So this is going to be my one list. And the same is I can again modify. So instead of 3, I can add string so this is my string right and I can also have 1.11 so I can like this and instead of again nine, uh, I can also have another element which is going to be my so 1 2 3 so this again this is this element is a list for me right I can have this as well so even this is a list for me so if you see this now we have string also part of my list I have integer also part of my list I have float also part of my list I have complex number and also I have a list which is part of my um, element of my list, uh, the main list, right? So list is a very, very, very flexible data type, guys, and very oftenly used, okay? So for any, for, for major of your data analysis work, uh, lists is very, very, very commonly used, okay? So we'll be also be talking about data frames, which is one of the odd uh, 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 types which is being used in pandas. So we'll be talking about lists in detail. Uh, but again, um, uh, to start with, let's always remember list is very flexible and we are not, uh, I mean, mandate to have uh, elements of the same data type, okay? So we can have elements of multiple data types here. That's also pretty much possible. Cool. So uh, that's that's something which is uh, which about it. So now let's try to proceed ahead. Uh, let's see how we can create the lists and uh, how we can uh, do a lot of stuff on that. So creation of list is pretty simple. So we can initialize the empty list using uh, a simple square bracket. So as I said, so list is going to be created using the square brackets. That's something which you have to always remember. Anything which is wrapped under my square brackets is going to be my list. Okay. 
So in this list, we have multiple elements present. Okay, so this is gonna be anything. So right now we are initiating a list with an empty, uh, um, with no element, basically an empty list. So I can do that. So I can have the square brackets with nothing inside it. So it's gonna initialize a blank list for me. So I can see this. So I have a blank list. So I have a list though, but it is, there's nothing there in the element. So it's an empty list for me. Okay, I can do that. Uh, now what I'm doing is I'm creating a list by using a string. Okay, so now what I'm doing is in the list, instead of having an empty element here, so there's empty, um, instead of having nothing there, I'm going to add one more, one element, which is a string for me. Okay, so I have geeks for geeks. So I have written one element, which is nothing but my geeks for geeks there. Okay, so that, that is something which is being added here. So uh, this is where I'll be having my one element part of my list. Okay. So this is where I'll be saying, so now what, what does the list, this list comprise of? So here I have single one element. So, this, this, so always remember guys, this is this entire thing is wrapped under one single code. This is my one element. Okay. This is not some 13 elements here. No. So this entire string is one element of my list. But if I talk about this string alone, so this string might have n characters. So it has 13 characters, for example, here, right? So, but if I talk about this list, this list has only one element and this one element is this string entirely geeks for geeks. This entire string is one element here. Okay. So I'm not talking about the characters as remember, I'm talking about the list as a data type here. So for the list, this entire geeks for geeks is my one single element. Okay. So, so list with the use of string. So this is where we have the element geeks for geeks mentioned here. Clear? Any questions, guys? Do put up in the chat. Okay. So now we can also have multiple elements, as I said. So we have. So now instead of having a single geeks for geeks, so I, I can also have multiple elements. Like so, I, I can have geeks as 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 one element. Now I can have for another element, and then geeks another element. Okay. So now, as you can see, each of these elements are individually wrapped under quotes. Okay. So now at this time is this double quote. I can still have it in a triple quote or a single quote still fine. There's no, there should not be any confusion with why it is wrapped in a single quote or a double quote. Anything is fine here. Okay. So here, instead of having geeks score geeks written in a single quote, I'm writing geeks as a geeks for and geeks as three different elements, three different wrappers available for me. Right. So here in this case, if I simply do, uh, list. Okay. So can you see this? Uh, I have, this is my list here, right? Now, for example, on top element, if I do print length of list. So here, what is my length? Length means how many elements are present in my, in this list. Okay. So if I do this, I'll get length as one. Okay. Because it has only one element in this, right? But what you do. So uh, you have this element, right? Now, if you do list of this, so if now on top of this, if you do print length of list here, uh, my bad, so length of list, that's going to be giving you three. Okay, clear. So here, uh, and I'll be also printing, I'll, I'll print list here just to be sure of the element. Okay. Can you see this? So I have three elements here, geeks for geeks, right? So there are three elements here. Now, just, uh, just assuming now, what if I have this element geeks for geeks, right? Now, if I have to access it, for example, same concept works here for sequential data types, we have the concept of indexes, right? So as you know, indexes starts the two types of indexes, positive and negative indexes still valid for list as well. Okay. So if I have to access the first element, which is geeks, from this from this sequential data type okay so what can i do i can do print of i can do print of list of zero so if i do simple this is my list right so for example this just not get confused with so this is my list so now if i have to access my first element which is geeks so geeks is my first element right so i can do list of zero that's going to be giving me the geeks here this is my first element right Clear guys. Or now again, just to give you a quick thing. So now if I do length of list here, that's going to be giving me three because I have three elements in this list, right? Clear. Now, if I do length on top of this element, which is geeks, 
Can somebody tell me what will be the output here? Jayant or anybody who is part of our chat. If I do length on top of my list of zero, so list of zero is not this entire list anymore. List of zero is one element of my list. Okay, so this one element is geeks. Okay, so now this command means that I want to calculate the list of zero ka length. Okay, so list of zero is geeks. So now I, I am saying that so this list of zero will now internally get replaced by this. And now this is what it means. So now length of geeks is so this is how now in this case i'm saying i'm trying to ask how many sub elements are present and what is what is the sub element of a string is characters and what is a character character is anything which is of one single uh, length right so here g is of one length e then e then k then s so then the length of this will be five right now what i mean for this entire list the length is three, but for individual first element, which is geeks, the length is five. And here five means five characters. Okay. Clear guys. Likewise, I can also print the second element, which is list, uh, uh, sorry, the third element. So for this geek, so I can also have, uh, so it's going to be my geeks here. Okay. Cool. Great guys, thank you so much for responding. Okay, so this is how uh, the basics of things are defined. Now we can have the multi uh, uh, dimensional uh, list also possible. So as I was saying, so we can have uh, a list within my list. Okay, so like for example, this is, this is an interesting example. So now look at this. So now what I've done is, so same example. So now for this geeks for geeks, what I've done is I've made this geeks and for wrapped under another list. Okay, so now, now just try to just try to follow this guys. Okay, if you have any confusion, just let me know. So what I've done here is now look at this. So in this outer list, so I have uh, just for example, just a minute. Okay. So now look at this outer boundary. Okay, this is my outer boundary. So this is gonna be my main list, my outer list. Okay, so in this outer list, so how many commas are there? I have only single comma where I have uh, two elements, right? So this is going to be my first element and this is going to be my second element. So if I talk about this list, how many elements are there? There are two elements. Okay. In this, this is going to be my first element, which is again a list that is fine. And this is going to be my second element, which is uh, again a list. I'm again defining this as a list. So this is defining becoming my multi-dimensional list. So I have list in multiple dimensions here. This is also possible. Okay. So now uh, I'll just remove this part. So now if I just print list here, this is going to be my printing me the elements. So I have two elements here, right? So geeks, for geeks and for wrapped under a list class, this is going to be my first list. And the other one, which is basically my geeks here, this is going to be my second element. Okay, cool. Fair enough. Now, if I have to uh, find out my elements, the first element here, how can I do that? So can I do print of list of zero? So what it should print? It should print me the first element of my list, right? And what is that first element? Geeks for wrapped under a list. This is going to be my first element. So now can you see this? The element which got printed is geeks and for which again under my list. Okay. Now what happens now within this list, if I have to access for, how can I do that? So now on this index, this, there's a multi-dimensional indexing available here, right? So on this, so this, because this list of zero is again a list, right? This can still behave it. This, this can still behave like a list, right? Simple as that. This, this can still behave as like a list. So now in this list, which is an output of this, I want to access for. So for this entire list, what is the index of for? I can do again a square indexing here and I can give one. So like zero is geeks and one is four, or I can give minus one for to access four. I can do that, right? So if I do it like this, in this case, it will give me four. Clear guys, any confusion here? Any confusion, just let me know guys. So I can also access individual elements within my list. Okay. 
So now likewise, if I print one, so I'll get this element geeks, but can you see this? This is actually a list. If you see uh, the type of this, you'll get list, which is not an element. It's not a string. I can, I'm not able to access geeks here. I'm still only seeing list. Okay. So to access this element geeks, I have to give zero. So then now I'll get the element geeks out of this list. And now if you see the type of this, you'll be able to see string. Now you are able to access the string. Okay. Great. Ali Habib, uh, Muhammad, Samir, Jain. Thank you so much. Great, great guys. Thank you so much for responding. Okay. So always remember to access the elements, we have to always understand what data type it is. Okay. So if I just do this, for example, now you'll be seeing list because what it is, it is actually giving you a list of element list is this is list list is geeks. Okay. Only it is also although it's only having one element. That's fine. But still the class is list here, right? So to access geeks out of this, you have to define the index and what is the index here? It is zero or even minus one is fine. Okay. Because only one element is here there, right? So now if we see type of this, this is giving me string and not list. Okay. Now, now this is accessing the elements. Cool. So, uh, great. So, uh, I think let's, let's try to finish this part and then we can continue tomorrow with the tuples. That's fine. Uh, but I, I think I've already, uh, uh, told you uh, all of these, right? So, uh, so now, so what do you say? So this is my list here. So we've already accessed geeks and all that. So we've already done that. And, uh, yeah. So uh, again, we can access the same list, uh, the, the first and the last element. Okay. Let me, let me give you an example guys. So quickly, I want you to solve this problem for me. Okay. So please, I would be looking your support in this. So now suppose I'm defining a, a, a list here. So a is my list. Okay. So look at this question. Uh, my bad. Uh, just a minute. Okay. It's cool. So I have my variable a list here. So I'm defining a as, so I have elements like one comma two comma three, and then I'm defining another list here, one comma. So I have four comma five comma six. I have another list here, seven comma eight comma nine. Okay. And then I'm, I have list like, uh, 10 comma 11. Okay. So quickly guys, I want the answer in really quick succession. So quickly guys, what will be the output here? If I do length of a, how many elements are there quickly guys? How many elements are there in this uh, uh, list a? What will be the output here? Quickly guys. So here, can you see you have, if we can count here. So one, two, three is fine. Now this list is getting started here, right? So this list, this entire list is one element. So this is going to be my fourth element. Then I have five and then I have six. Very well said Ali Habib. Thank you so much. So we have length as, uh, did I make a mistake here? Uh, three, four, uh, I think I've, okay, I've not run this. My bad, my bad. I have not run this. Okay. So yeah, so length is a, so length of a is six here. So I have six elements here, right? So Jen, I think it's clear for you right now. Now, uh, how can I access the element nine? So now my objective is you have to print the element nine. How can you print nine from this quickly guys? How can you print nine? So what can I do? So now, first of all, nine is part of my fourth element. First of all, we have we understood this fourth element is an entire list, right? So first of all, let's try to see this. So if I have to do, if I do zero, one, two, three, that's going to give me this entire list. Okay. So this is where I have the entire list available here, right? 
Now this is again a list, right? And now within this, I have another uh, element here. So this list has how many elements? It has one, two, three, and again a list, a fourth element. So if I do a length of this, I'll be getting what? I'll be getting four here because I have four elements here, right? So this is fine, no problem here. And now nine is present within the list of the fourth element, right? So I, what can I do here? Uh, fourth ka, I want the, uh, again the fourth element or I can also do minus one, okay? Still fine. I have seven, eight and nine. So now this is again a list, okay? So now in this list again, if I do length here, I'll be getting what? Three, because this list has three elements, right? This is fine. Now within this list, I want to access nine. How can I do that? I can, now on top of this, I can write two or again minus one. So now I'll be getting nine here. Cool? Simple, eh? Okay, great. Thank you so much, guys. I think let's let's. Uh, it was a good discussion today. Let's let's. We can stop here and then maybe tomorrow we'll finish this uh, introduction to data types uh, part quickly. So we have uh, tuples, we have set, we have boolean, we have dictionary. So we'll try to cover this tomorrow. So no need to hurry in that. So we'll try to quickly cover this tomorrow. Okay. But I hope you guys are liking this. Again, guys, don't worry about this. I'll try to cover as many questions as we can. Okay. It's not about theory class anymore. So we'll be doing as many practicals as we can. That's gonna, this is the way you'll be able to understand the problems, okay? So don't worry about that. Cool guys, thank you so much. Um, uh, thank you so much for joining us. So we'll be actually covering the data analysis part quickly in three weeks. So that's gonna be our agenda, okay? And we'll try to cover as many things as, we, as possible. So uh, do join us tomorrow, same time, 10 p.m. Uh, we'll be covering, we'll be finishing up this data types. Okay, great guys, thank you so much. Thank you, Jim, thank you, Ali Habib. We'll be seeing each other tomorrow again.